So to start for our sculpture, we're going to need to create a base. And the first piece of clay you'll get, you'll need to clap and slap it until you have it into a ball. It doesn't have to be perfect and round or smooth, just so long as it's round-ish. And then we're gonna press that into our mat. We wanna make it so that that ball suddenly has a flat edge. And I'm just smashing it and spreading it out just a little bit. That way when I tap it, it doesn't roll over. This is going to serve as our base or the stand for our clay project to stand on. This is what the long stick that will hold the fish will be coming out of. So I need to make sure it's very stable. So that's why I'm spreading it out even a little bit more. Now I want this to look like something like a piece of sand that you might find on the ocean floor or the bottom of a fish tank since we're doing a pet shop. So I'm thinking of some things that I can add. One thing I know I'd like to add is I'd like to add a starfish. So to create a starfish, I'm gonna take a piece of clay and roll small coils. To roll a small coil, all you do is you take a piece of clay, you roll it first into a ball. Notice when I roll a ball, my hands are going in a circle, and now I'm going to roll something called a coil. A coil is when you roll a piece of clay up and down your hand, just like that. So now I've got a coil. So now I have a coil, and I think this coil will be a little bit too long, so I'm actually going to cut some of this off. There we go, and now I'll make another coil, and this will be for my starfish. So I've got one. I'm gonna make another one about the same length. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm gonna cross that like an X, and then I'm just gonna smash the two together and then smooth it just like that. Now a star and a starfish have five points. So now what I'm going to do is just take another piece of clay. This one's going to be a little bit smaller, roll it into a coil. Notice I made it smaller and then find where I want the top of the starfish to be. Maybe right there and then just kind of smash it and smush it into the clay. Now when I flip it over, I have a little bit of a star or a starfish shape, but I have these lines that are showing so I actually think I like this side better. I'm gonna take my finger and get a little bit wet with this, which is called slip. Slip is created with water and clay. And it's called slip because, hello, it's slippery. It also works great at smoothing out any cracks, smoothing out any parts like what I'm doing, and it will also serve as our clay glue, and I'll show you in just a moment. The cool thing about starfish is they don't have to be perfect. I have one little leg of the starfish a little longer. I could cut it off pinch it off, or I could just leave it. Now that I have my starfish made, I think I'd like to go ahead and attach it to my base. Now my stick will be coming from about the middle of my ball of clay, so I don't wanna put my starfish where it would cover that spot. I want it to kind of stick over onto the side. It's like the little Patrick, oh, of my sculpture. I'm gonna flip it over, and this is the side. It doesn't look quite as nice. I'm gonna have that be the back, and I'm toothbrushing this. I'm slipping. That's my slip, remember? And scoring, scoring is when you scratch into a surface. So I just did that, and now that that's on there, I'm just gonna press it gently without smashing it, just to make sure that it's going to stay. I would be really sad if my clay project dried and my little starfish fell off. So I'm just pressing it gently, making sure that little part in the middle doesn't get covered up. Now, starfish have texture, so I'm gonna use the back of my stick, the dull part of my stick, and just gently pushing it at a diagonal create some texture on my starfish. If I press too hard, I might end up losing the shape of my starfish. I'm just doing this very gently. Now I'm gonna create some seaweed. So I've got my extra clay. I'm gonna move my base out of the way a little bit. You can see my starfish now has all sorts of texture on it, but yet you can still see the star shape. So to create seaweed, I'm gonna take my clay and just kind of squish it in between my hands. So it's not super thin. I have it about as thick as a cookie, and I can even press it into my mat a little bit to get it so that I have a smooth side. And now on the smooth side, I'm just gonna drag my stick through the clay and create some curved lines. So I'm just dragging my stick, creating some curved lines, not too thin. It needs to be a little on the thick side. This will be my seaweed. And you know when something's underwater, it tends to move and has kind of a 
wavy kind of look to it. So I'm creating that seaweed look. So there we go. Now my seaweed is complete. I see that I do have some little, little bumps of clay sticking up that we call clay boogers. So I, when I see that, I just take a wet finger with slip and massage it very gently so there's no rough edges. Let me show you how to attach your seaweed. On the bottom of the seaweed where you plan to attach, pinch it and pull it back to create a foot. Do you see how I pinched and pulled it back? This will create a foot. You have to have that foot in order for your sculpture to have something to stand on. So now that I've got that done, I'm remembering not to cover up the middle part. Just gonna overlap that clay a little bit with that foot. I overlapped the two pieces of clay a little bit and now I'm gonna bend that seaweed back. If my seaweed keeps falling over, this piece looks a little long. If it keeps falling over, then that means that either my clay is too thin or my piece is too long. So you might have to think about how to make some of your pieces a little bit shorter or thicker if they keep falling over. And here I go again, pinch, pull it back, make a foot, don't forget to toothbrush, and attach my seaweed, making sure not to cover up the middle part of my clay. Now I've attached all the pieces of the clay. It's good to give it a little bit of a wiggle test. If they feel really floppy, then that means you need to either reattach them or make them thicker. You could also push the pieces together to make them stronger by connecting them with other pieces if they do feel too fragile. So now I have the base for my tropical fish. Now let's work on the fish. Let's talk about how to make that fish. So I've got a piece of clay and I'm going to start with just the fish's body. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this into a sphere and I do want this one to be kind of smooth. So I'm taking my time and if I have any areas that show a line or have a crack, I can smear it with my finger or I can get my finger a little bit wet with water. I don't wanna to add too much water or else it'll become difficult to work with. It'll become too muddy. Now that I have a ball, I'm just gonna put it in between my hands and squish it or you can put it on your mat and squish it flat. And I want it to stay a little on the thick side. I don't want this to get too thin. Any areas I see cracks, that's my clay's way of telling me that it's thirsty and it needs more water. So I'm just adding that water back into it. Clay is made out of water and dirt. Eventually we'll want all that water to go away and evaporate. That's what will have to happen before we place it in the kiln. But when we work with it, we need it to stay nice and wet. All right, now that I've got a good smooshed circle-ish shape, I need to start thinking about the parts of the fish. So the first thing I'm gonna draw with my stick is I'm gonna draw a curved line and this will be for the gill. You know that fish do not have noses. They breathe with their gills and they don't breathe air like we do. They take in the water. So I just drew a curved line like that. I did not go all the way through the clay. Notice that my stick was at a diagonal and I pulled it toward me to make the line nice and smooth. You're going to need to do this on the front and the back. This is a sculpture, not just one-sided artwork like a lot of times we do when we do two-dimensional pieces. This is three-dimensional, meaning people are going to see it from all sides, so we need to make all sides look fabulous. Now that that's finished, I'm gonna decide how I want my fish's mouth to be. So I could make my fish's mouth, you could have kind of like a happy mouth like this. I could draw it lightly just to test it out. You could have kind of like a cranky mouth like that. So think about what kind of mouth you want for your fish. I think I'm going to have mine be a diagonal line like this. So this time I'm going to go ahead and press my stick all the way down to the bottom. I press my stick all the way down and I'm going to flip him over because it didn't quite go all the way through. So I'm just going to follow that line. And there my mouth, my fish's mouth is open. Move any pieces of clay, any parts that are sticking out, just smooth them out a little bit. All right, now I've got my fish. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the eyes for my fish using small pieces of clay, little balls of clay. I don't have to make it too small, though. It might be kind of funny if you had really big eyes. Let's see how it looks. I mean, that's pretty funny right there. I kind of like it. I'm going to make it just a pinch smaller. And because I want this small circle to stick to the face, I have to use that toothbrush. And I'm going to wiggle it gently in. And I could press 
maybe a marker or something into it, find something with an interesting tip. I think I like this one with the little X. There we go. Now he has a nice pupil to see with. Remember, whatever you do on one side, you do need to flip it over and try it again on the other side. It looks like I lost my line a little bit. So let me go ahead and make the eye on the back. All right, now well. I have an eye on both sides. Now what I think I'll do is create the texture of the scales. And for that, just like I did when I made my fish, I think I'll use the back of my stick and I'm not going to poke my stick vertically. It's going to go in diagonally and I think I'll follow the line of that curve of the gill. Okay, so for the last step of my fish, I need to add a top fin and a back fin. Now you can change up and do anything you want to do your fish. I'm just showing you the basics. So let me show you how to do the top and the back and then we'll talk about the ones on the side. So I have a nice piece of clay. I'm gonna roll it into a ball. I'm gonna squish it flat. That's the same steps I took for this one. Could even use my mat. And it doesn't have to be perfectly round unless you want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and cut this right in half. Now one half is eventually going to go here. And the other half, if I flip it around, can go there. But you might want to change the shape of it a little bit. If I know this is going to be for the tail, I might just want to bend it a little bit in the middle. Smooth out any edges with a little bit of water on my finger, you can change the shape of it any way you want to. And I also think I'm gonna drag my stick through there to create the lines that I know are in the fin of the tail. So I'm taking now my sharp end of my stick and I'm just dragging it through. I'm not going all the way through the clay. I'm just dragging it through the clay to create texture. Remember, whatever you do on one side, flip, do the same on the other side. And I think I'll do that to this fin. Now also. that I have both of those pieces finished, I need to go ahead and attach. But you can see that this is straight and this is curved. So watch how I take care of that. I need to massage this a little bit, with some the clay glue. And I'm gonna put it on here and then bend it gently to get it to stay. Now just setting it on there isn't going to keep it there forever. I need to now take my finger and just very gently, in fact, I like to use my thumbnail and very gently attach and smoosh those two pieces of clay together. If you lose some of your lines and your texture, when you're finished attaching the two, you can always get your stick and try it again. Make sure you do the same thing to both sides. I lost some of my polka dots, but that's okay. When I'm done attaching, I can always go back and fix. The key is you wanna make sure that this feels pretty stable, like it's not going to wobble. If it's really wobbly and falling off, then that means you need to try it again. Maybe this is too tall or too thin. To attach this to there, I think I'll just take my tooth. First, I think I'll flatten that a little bit by tapping it on the mat. There we go. Making sure to use my fingernail or a little bit of something to get those two to stick together. I would be super sad if I got my fish out of the kiln and it was missing parts of it. Now that that's finished, I can bend him a little bit to make him look like he's swimming. All right, now last but not least, I'm gonna take small pieces of clay, roll, squish. This is a smaller version of what we did here and here. So I flattened it, cut it in half. I can put one there and then one on the other side. Don't forget to toothbrush. Now what I will do for you is I'm going to put a little hole here and a little hole in your base. When these guys come out of the kiln, then we will attach them together with the stick in between. So it looks like our fish will be swimming above the, uh, the land that you made underneath. So that little stick will go from the fish down to your base. All right, guys, I can't wait to see how your tropical fish for our pet shop turn out. Let's get started. 